Hello friends, welcome to the ServiceNow Word and today we'll see how to return array from script include to client script. For implementing this, we'll take one use case today and use case is on change of caller field in incident form, populate all asset name which are assigned to caller in description field. Means when we are changing the caller field, when we let's say caller field is there and when we are changing the caller name, let's say if it's empty or we are putting some caller name, let's say any caller name. So whatever the asset assigned to that particular caller, I want to populate all asset names in description field. So how we'll do that? Let's that 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 we'll see today. So let's go to the instance and try to implement it. Okay. So here firstly we'll go to the incident form. Yeah. So I just want to exp uh, explain you one more time like when we are selecting any caller let's say I am selecting Abel Tutor okay so I want the asset names which are assigned to Abel Tutor in description field okay so for that what we'll do we need to write one script include and uh, client script okay and we don't know how many assets are assigned to that particular caller right so for that we'll use the array so how we'll do that that we'll see today so firstly i'm writing the script include so in filter navigator type script include yes so under system definition you will get it So if you remember like in my one of my previous videos we I have discussed about like how to return multiple values. So there I am returning the multiple values using the object but today we are using the array. Okay. So I am clicking on new and I am just giving the name. So let's say I am giving the name and the name will be like asset detail okay and i just want to make it client callable okay now here we need to create one function so the function will be like uh, what function name will take let's say i'm taking the detail Then we will create one array. So like that we are creating the array where ARR then this is square brackets. Then we need one uh, uh, then we need caller uh, value right. So we will create one more variable that is caller and we will get this value from the client side. So I did this dot get parameter. sys per underscore caller after that uh, i need to glide the asset table so what will be the asset table name so asset table name will be the lm underscore asset so let's open asset table as well in one of the tab so here i am typing lm underscore asset dot list yes so this is the asset table okay so here we need to glide the asset table only means this table so their name will be the lm underscore asset if you see here lm underscore asset so we'll glide that table where gr okay so here i'm putting the table name lm underscore asset and now here we'll give the query like uh, caller will be equal to i think assigned to field only let's open one of the record we'll check i think assigned to field also referencing the user table only let's see yes 
so we'll take the assigned to field only because caller also referencing to the uh, user table and that assigned to field also referencing to the user table only so i'll just paste it here and here this side i want to compare with caller okay now here i'll just put if because i want to retrieve all the records why i'm giving getting error because of this comma okay perfect now once we'll get there we need to push into the array so for pushing into the array we'll uh, we need to write arr dot push okay what i need what i want i want name so the name will be like this their display name so their backend name will be the display underscore name so i just copy this and i push the push their display name into the array and write to string means it will push into the string format only yes and just put the semicolon after that we will return this array return json dot stringify array name okay so now our script includes include is ready right now we need to create a client script as well so i'll just open one duplicate tab and here i'll search client script i'll just click on new and here i'll just give the name uh i'll just give the name like uh, i think as a detail i have already given to the script include so here i'll just give the name like uh, what name i'll give um, populate asset detail i am selecting the table that is incident then we need to select the type so the type will be on change why because on changing on caller field i want to per, uh, i want to run this client script so select the field as as caller now here like var ga because we need to call our script include so we need to we, if we need to call script include we need to use glide ajax that's why i'm creating one object for the glide ajax so that is var ga equal to new glide ajax and here i'll put the script include name so the script include name will be the asset detail so i'll just paste it here yes then i need to pass some parameters so sys per underscore name so this will be the function name and what is the function name that is i think detail only right yes so i'll just paste it here and then after that i need to pass one parameter as well that is caller right and what is the parameter name we have given sysperm underscore caller and here i just pass the new value of the caller simple then after that I'll call the ga dot get xml sir function 
if we use a ga dot get xml uh, get xml function uh, get xml answer function we don't need to write that uh, line of code for parsing the xml data right what what is the response we are getting we don't need to write we are writing like document dot something something like that so we don't need to write so here i'll just uh, i need to one function name as well so i'll just put the function name like uh, let's say get detail so i need to define this function as well get detail need to pass one parameter that is response and here create one variable where answer answer equal to response so in this say variable i am storing the response right then we need to parse the response as well right so we will create one more variable let's say i am creating the variable like uh, mm, let's say asset okay so i'll write where asset is equal to json dot parse answer okay then after that i'll set the value into the description field so i'll just write g underscore founder set value set value so the field backend name i think description only and here write asset so now i'm saving this So now we having the client script as well as script include is ready. So let's here we'll do one thing. We'll just group by by the assigned to table here in asset table. So side by side we can validate is as well, right? So let's say um, our tutor having three assets, right? okay but their name is for one uh, let's take the field display name as well yes so now you are seeing the display name so, uh, uh, display name of the assets so ability tutor having the three uh, assets assigned so let's refresh this form and I am selecting here our tutor and let's see what result we are getting. Oh, our tutor is not there. Let me see. Okay, it's there only. Yeah, so we are getting how many uh, three asset name this logic tech logic tech desktop optical wireless mouse logitech desktop keyboard and this apple macbook pro 15 inch so if you see the apple tutor having the three assets only for validation purpose we will do one thing we will check uh, some other user so let's say i am taking the user this one this alexandra pranet they also having the three assets only but they having same asset able to only right mm, we'll take another one which one i did take yeah this one this one adela okay so i'll just here yes yeah so you see all uh, assets are coming but you see like it's coming uh, like that only like it's after comma it's coming like that we don't want that we want like a after one asset name 
we want uh, other asset name in the next line right so how we can do that for that uh, we don't have to do so much of work we just need to add one line in our client script and uh, line will be like uh, what i will create one variable and variable like uh, var val equal to and i'll just write asset dot join and slash n and i'm just saving it so again we refreshing the form So here I am selecting the first user is Apple Tutor. Oh, it's same. It's there is no change at all. Let's see why it's coming. Okay, because we haven't put the we haven't update here. Uh, well, it updated here as well. So now if we save. Now I think we'll get the expected result. Like after one asset, we'll get the next asset name in the next line. So let's refresh the form. So now again I'm selecting the user Able Tutor. Yeah, so you see. After one asset, the second next asset will come in the next line. I am changing the user that is Atla. Yes. So now it's looking good. So what I have done, let me summarize you. I have created one script include and there I have just taken the, uh, there I have created one function that is detailed function. Then I have created one array. Okay, and then we are getting when we created one variable caller and we are get we are storing the caller value which we are getting from the client side. After that, uh, we are gliding the alm underscore asset that is asset table, and then we are passing the uh, uh, parameter like uh, if the caller is equal to the assigned to. So we'll retrieve all the records which are matching with this criteria. Okay, then whatever the records we are getting. For those records, their display value, a display underscore name field will be there, and I'm storing in my array, and I'm returning this array from the script include like this. Return JSON dot string if I, and this is the array name. Then we came to the client script. In client script, we have created one object of client ajax because uh, this is the standard syntax for calling the script include into the client side. Then after that uh, we have passed uh, we have add one parameter so here if you see that we are calling the function name so this is also uh, syntax only if you want to call the if you want to call the uh, function from script include side to client side you have to write like the system underscore name then we need to pass one parameter that is caller name so we are passing uh, then we are passing the system underscore caller then we have used the g uh, get xml ga dot get xml answer. And there we have to declare one function that get detail. Then we have defined the function and whatever the response we are getting, we are storing in the answer table, uh, answer, uh, answer uh, this field. Then after that we have created one more variable that is asset and there we are parsing whatever the answer we are getting, we are parsing their answer. Then we are, because we are getting the like data, of, like uh, whatever the values we are getting from the arrays, that is coming one up. Uh, after comma one after comma only so i want all those uh, like uh, values all the array elements in a uh, like uh, like one el element is populate populate into the next another element populate into the next line so that we are doing so that uh, for that we have used the asset dot join and then we are setting the value into the description field so like that we are doing so if you have any doubt if you just write in the comment box till that time thank you god bless you all